I want you to hit me as hard as you can. What's most impressive about Ted Kotcheff's work on his first Rambo movie is that while the sequels, as well as other action movies of the 80s, mostly fail to mix their chaos with a complex story, he manages to juggle the taut survival action with thematic rich character work. Stallone's name may be above the title, but the movie very much feels hinged on the three leads, including Danny He's Tiesel and Krenna's Trotman, as the latter two debate the psychology and morals of the sympathetic man at the center of all the action. Rambo's a civilian now, he's my problem. I don't think you understand. I didn't come here to rescue Rambo from you. I came here to rescue you from him. This keeps the tone and momentum of the story going when Stallone isn't on screen flexing his muscles, even if part of the second act does start to lose some steam. On top of balancing the complexities of the story and script, he does indeed deliver on the testosterone-driven action that would get blown to wild proportions come the sequels, delivering what today feels like old-school thrills with car chases and stunt work, caught up understanding how incredible a physical performer Stallone was beyond the boxing ring. Initially a massive three-hour movie that was cut down to a taut 90 minutes, Kotchev skillfully keeps the story moving and effortlessly balances between pure action and a talented cast that raises and keeps the movie above later imitation. With Rocky, director John G. Avildsen crafted what would be considered the most quintessentially American movie ever made. At the core of Stallone's script is a story of a man who, no matter how hard he's trained and fought, can never catch a break. And he lives out his life on the quiet blue-collar streets of Philadelphia, giving residents the occasional, yo, how you doing? Avildsen so beautifully captures that quiet authenticity and emotional rawness by letting Stallone shine center stage as the good-natured Rocky, canvassing the setting with occasional one-shots that lend a realness to the interactions between the characters. He never made anyone hold back during the more trying moments, especially those with Burt Young. Get on, you! Oh, you look at it! You owe me! You owe me! painting a wide canvas of a whole cast of characters who never got their moment. It makes it all the more perfect when the inspirational moments come in, having gripped us as an audience in the story of these very rootable characters, wanting to stand up and cheer when Rocky runs up those steps and throws punches at the cocky Apollo Creed. It's a movie that embodies the triumph of the American dream, giving life to the idea that when you're down, you're still never out. Alvidson captured that theme in Stallone's script with charm, warmth, and relatability. Your old man did pretty good tonight. Why weren't you there, huh? Creating something that has, to no surprise, stood the test of time. A lot of hands are put on the script for First Blood, with final credit going to Michael Cazal, William Sockheim, and Stallone himself. Less vicious than the novel from David Morrell, John Rambo kills fewer people and the ending isn't as bleak, but in its place is a movie that paints Rambo in a sympathetic light and feels linked to both classic action flicks and character studies of the 70s. Nothing is over! Nothing! You just don't turn it off! At the core of the carnage is a man suffering from not only severe PTSD, but also the sense that the world has no need for or want for a man like him. He doesn't have as many lines as the men on the other end of the standoff. Okay, Colonel, now you got us all scared to death. What, what do you and the special forces think I ought to do about your psycho out there? Let him go. Do what? And his actions speak volumes for a man pushed to the edge. Filled with now classic lines of dialogue. Let's do some hunting. Hunting? We ain't hunting him. He's hunting us. What makes the script such a terrific piece of action movie writing, the core of who Rambo is is never lost amid the implausible action. Don't look at me, look at the road. That's how accidents happen. And that when he falls from a cliff with only a literal scratch coming out of it, he still feels like a very wounded character in immense pain. The nature of this man, explored between Tiesel and Trotman, keeps the narrative momentum mostly chugging, even if parts of the story feel at a standstill when Rambo is trying to escape the woods. Still, its script is smarter than many of the action movies that would follow in the 80s, and Stallone again shows his knack for creating compelling characters with just as many feelings as protruding muscles. 
While Stallone would become known for a very specific type of movie only about 10 years after the first Rocky came out, there's no better example of what truly lies at the heart of this cinema icon than a script for this first outing. The story of a struggling fighter whose life has kicked him from one end to another, Stallone crafted a story that favors a character study format more than a sports movie, focusing entirely on the simple, humble, somewhat disillusioned, but always spirited boxer. Stallone wrote Rocky with such a big heart and blue collar charm, it's incredibly easy to grow close to him, and like many of the other characters in the story, no matter how tough he may seem, there's always an incredible vulnerability to him that the story slowly begins to peel at. This slow character development leading to a rousing, cheer-worthy finale makes for a formula that many sports movies have tried and failed to replicate. And while Stallone's contributions to the Rambo script do harken back to his work on Rocky in some small meaningful ways, there's a level of perfection to his work on Rocky that makes it no wonder why this will be the movie and the character he'll be most remembered for. Okay, let's not beat around the bush here. We all know Jerry Goldsmith is the master. The Omen. Planet of the Apes. Chinatown. Alien. The list goes on and on. While his work on First Blood may not rank up with some of his other classic scores, he still crafted an energetic, propulsive piece of music that gave life to the action on screen. Starting off, Goldsmith makes the early moments of First Blood feel like a traditional western, as this nomadic John Rambo strolls into a small town, just looking to see an old friend and grab something to eat. Then, when the chaos kicks in, there's a militaristic quality to the music, recalling the methodical pacing you can find in Anino Morricone's work from Battle of Algiers. Again, it's not his best work, but it's still a great piece of music to go along with his action movie. However, when we're talking about movie music, most movies can take a seat when it comes to the competition here. If there was a score made for strapping up your shoelaces and going out into the world to conquer all your dreams and feel like a champ doing it, then Bill Conti's booming electrifying right there alongside other 1970s gems like Star Wars and Jaws, you're unlikely to find another piece of music that's as iconic as that inspirational cue that kicks in right as Rocky starts his training montage. It all just makes you want to put on your best running shoes and barrel down the street, fist pumping all the way down the block. Laced in between the heart-stopping pieces are easygoing, jazzy pieces that flesh out the authenticity of the Philadelphia setting, such as the song, You Take My Heart Away. And yet, even with all the other smaller pieces, there's still no escaping the power of the bigger, more triumphant pieces, like when Rocky rallies during his fight with Creed. Believe it. a musical competition, all that needs to be said is, hey, it's Rocky. It's Rocky. Other than Rocky, Rambo is Stallone's best character. As he demonstrated with Rocky, Rambo is a vulnerable man struggling with his own issues inside, feeling rejected from the world around him. Rambo's struggles are just a bit more intense, and when he's pushed, he goes a different way than Rock would. What Stallone proved here that he only got to tap into with the Rocky movies and the way he throws himself into the fray with such gusto and raw energy, he sells it all so well that it's no wonder why he became one of the top action stars even after this. But still, he also sells the bigger emotional moments, particularly at the end when he goes full actor mode. And I come back to the world, and I see all those maggots at the airport protesting me, spitting, calling me baby killer and all kinds of vile crap. Who are they that protest me, huh? Who are they? Unless they've been me and been there and know what the hell they're yelling about! No one quite mixes strength with vulnerability like Stallone, and First Blood is perhaps the best example of that. No one is quite able to mix the ingredients of typical male masculinity with sheer vulnerability like Stallone does. Hey. You know, I said that stuff on TV didn't bother me none. Yeah? 
did. Well, with Rocky, he left it all come out in his most famous role. Like with First Blood, it's easy to look at Stallone's filmography and see the action star. But no matter how many bullets he puts in countless heads, if you want a glimpse into the soul of the actor, then you really have no better place to go than in the first Rocky. There's not much else to say other than he fully embodies the genuine warmth and relatability of this man with a dream, and the kinds of characters he can play like no one else. It doesn't take long for First Blood to become the rip-roaring action movie that it is, with Rambo busting out of the police station with some sick-ass jump kicks and palms to the face. From there, we get great car chases and sweet motorcycle jumps, implausible leaps of faith, sprays of bullets, rat tunnels, and even some M60 action. Like some of the best action movies of the era, much of the stunt work and mayhem holds up even today, with a combination of old-school action and Stallone's muscles proving a concoction that spawned a whole side of the actor's skill set. As noted before, Rocky is more about the insightful character work than the boxing action. For six years, the six years you've been sticking it to me, I want to know how come. You don't want to know. Yeah, I want to know how come. You want to know. I want to know. Okay, I'm going to tell you, because you had the talent to become a good fighter, and instead of that, you became a leg breaker to some cheap second-rate loan shark. It's a living. It's a waste of life with really very little boxing going on, especially compared to the endless montages of the third and fourth outings, as awesome as they are. When the fighting does kick in, there's a bit of a dated quality to them. It can't help but feel diminished by the taut, visceral filmmaking style of modern boxing movies, and even the way Scorsese would film his with Raging Bull a few years later. The music still makes these scenes pop with energy and inspiration. <laughs> say Rocky is further proof that sometimes what makes sports movies great isn't the sport itself, but the people in them. So unlike the film, Rocky wins this match in a resounding landslide victory, winning almost all the previous categories. But while Rocky couldn't beat Apollo Creed, well at least in the first one, he wipes the floor with John Rambo in his first film outing. Do you agree? Either way, leave a message in the comments below and tell us who you think should have won this face-off. Or shower me with compliments about how awesome my arguments were. I won't mind. Really. Anyway, until next time, Cine fans. Yo, how you doing? <laughs> Stupid.